Hey, so we just came out, the family just came out to collect a little bit of firewood, come for a little bit of a walk in our woods. We're just 500 meters from home here. Uh, for the last six years, I've been, we have been collecting firewood ourselves from the, from the woodland, which is awesome. It's a great thing. I really love it. And, uh, and I do everything by hand which I love as well. I don't like a chainsaw. I find it's, it's very noisy, noise pollution. And uh, it's also, I find it a bit disrespectful for me personally uh, to the spirits of the trees, etc., etc. I just, yeah, it's just it's too much, the machine. So I like to sweat a little bit, do it by hand. Also, a great thing about doing it by hand is that you're not cutting huge bits of wood. You're just cutting smaller bits of wood for the fire. The maximum I cut is maybe something four inches in diameter because anything bigger than that becomes really difficult with a bow saw. And we don't really need it. For our little stove and fire, etc., we don't really need anything bigger than that. Another really good reason for not cutting the bigger stuff is that the big rotting branches and dead trees, etc., etc., are vital, absolutely vital for the health of the forest. I'm reading an amazing book at the moment called The Hidden Life of Trees, a book that my mom gave me. I'm loving it. It's full of just the magical stuff, but, uh, but truth, uh, real magic stuff. And uh, a line that I read in there just the other day was that two-thirds, I think it said, two-thirds of all living things on the planet, on land, rely on some kind of fungus, fungal growth. That's, inc that's an incredible statistic, if it's true, or if it's anywhere near true, it's incredible. So, I mean, it's very, very important for the health of the forest that there's dead wood. And one of the things that a lot of people make a mistake of when they're... I I've been to eco-villages all over the world, and they go into the woods and they take dead wood. They take all the dead wood that's lying around on the floor. It's, it's not a good idea to do that because you're really destroying the ecosystem that's in that woodland. There's so much life in there, little beetle larvae, ants, fungus. It's all connected and it's all an essential part of the forest. Actually, when the, when the tree is dead, its use, its beauty, its magic is not finished. In fact, it's kind of, in some ways, it's only just beginning. That dead corpse of the tree then goes on then to provide sustenance and life for thousands and thousands of creatures. And so, another good reason for not taking dead wood that's lying around on the forest floor is it's rotten, so it doesn't burn so well. Once it's rotting, then the fungus starts to creep in and other larvae and stuff start to lay their eggs in it, beetles start to lay their eggs in it, wasps, all sorts of things. So, much better to take uh, Either harvest living trees, if you have that ability. Uh, harvest the living, the living trees, the young ones, uh, and then leave them to mature to uh, to what's it called? You have to leave it for a year or so to to season, so that you can burn it to dry out, etc. In this wood here, we're incredibly lucky. We've got an endless supply of perfect diameter standing dead wood. So these these here, as you can see, this whole stand of, uh, in Italy we call this carpino, I think it's witch hazel, not sure. But the, one of the things about Italian woods, is uh, certainly here in Tuscany anyway, is that th they cut the woodland every 25 years or so. They cut the wood, they just leave some of the older trees standing, beautiful big old oak trees there behind me. And they leave some of those older trees standing, and then the new growth comes up. And so you get trees like this, Carpino, which grows up very quickly, and also the Frasino, which is ash. That grows up very quickly uh, from the roots of the old trees. As you see here, it's like, a, it's like coppicing. So you've got almost 20 strands of, of trunks now coming from the old trunk that was cut. 25 years ago or 10 years ago, whatever it is, however old these, these are now. 
but there's so much of these young trees coming through that they can't they don't all make it they don't all make the race to the light and so lots of them die and so we've got thousands of little trees in this forest and loads of them are dead and they're standing and it's perfect wood for burning because also it's bone dry if you take wood from off the floor now it's going to be wet inside and out but this wood here it's been raining for a couple of days here now this is just a couple of days before christmas uh, this this wood is bone dry inside even on the outside it dries very quickly because it's still standing the water just runs off but you can see this wood is all dead it's lost the top branches even this one that's still got a few of these branches on it is dead now so this these kind of these kind of trees are kind of perfect to take because they're not too long dead once they get too long dead, then they can start to get a bit rotten. Uh, so these ones are kind of perfect to take. They're a nice, easy diameter to deal with, with the bow saw as well. So, yeah, I take these. I take them, I'm very conscious about the wood I'm taking. I won't, I, sometimes I take a whole dead tree. But, I, but I'm always watching to see what's, what's using that tree. Is it used by the woodpeckers, for example? Woodpeckers, it's vital that woodpeckers have old dead trees to feed on to get the grubs from and etc etc so if i see an old dead tree i'll check to see if there's holes in it for woodpeck that woodpeckers are feeding on it etc some trees are used a lot more than others and so i'm very conscious about what i'm taking as to try and impact the the forest as little as possible or you know, even help it so these are, these are perfect these might even snap so uh, also in these woods here we've got a species of wood ant that tunnels into the base of these dead trees and so I don't cut it at the bottom because I've learnt that I'm cutting right into this this ant's nest and it's horrible because then you're destroying the whole nest they're all dormant at this time of the year so they're all huddled together inside there sleeping in masses little bundles of ants so I've learnt to cut the tree a bit higher to so I can leave that ant's nest intact. Uh, so I cut it there. For example, it's a little one. And it's bone dry inside. And this wood is, this wood is so good for, for burning. It burns really hot. And yeah, even though it's been raining, there's no need to get a, a winter store of wood because uh, the wood is dry here in the forest all the year round. It's not like being in Scotland where it can be a bit difficult or in the mountains here in Italy, it can be difficult because there's a lot of rain and a lot of snow, etc. Here, there's dry wood in the forest every day of the year. You just need to come out and get it. It's, uh, it's a great thing. I love doing it. It's good exercise, carrying the wood back, sawing it up by hand. No need for a gym when you live wild in nature or when you try and learn how to live wild in nature again, which is kind of what we're doing. Watch your head there, there Deb, in case that this branch falls. So, uh, yeah, cutting wood for the fire. It's just, a, it's just a really great idea to keep in mind not to be taking all the pieces of dead wood that are lying around on the forest floor. It's better to take standing dead trees and also be a little bit conscious of what is using the tree. Maybe there's a woodpecker nest in that tree uh, where the woodpecker sleeps during the winter also. So yeah, always keep in mind what you're, what you're cutting, what impacts you're having on the forest. Uh, you can see, I'll show you a couple of, back here you see, here's dead wood lying around on the forest floor. And a lot of people, when they go into the woods, when they go into wild places, they'll find that dead wood lying around like that and they'll just take it for the fire. But this, this wood is, this wood is totally rotten. Not only is it a bit wet inside, but it's rotten and so it's not going to burn so well. And it's full of life. This wood has got these little black lines on the inside of it where 
that's fungus that's growing through the rotting wood. And the fungus has, apparently I've been reading in this book, the fungus has like a barrier between different species of fungus. It's amazing. So, so all that wood that's lying on the floor, I, all, I leave it now. I don't take any wood re really lying on the floor unless it's very freshly fallen. And that's that really. Uh, we, we collect the firewood to heat our house. That's the only source of heat for our home. We also do all of our cooking pretty much on, on the fire, which is awesome. You're not, we're not using any fossil fuels. It's completely free uh, and it's completely sustainable. So yeah, back to the old ways, back to nature. Keeps you fit, keeps you healthy, keeps the nature healthy. It's a win-win situation. Thanks again, guys. I wanted to get that little video out for a while. Ciao.